OK, first up, is it time to axe the House of Lords? Now, as suggested by Nigel Farage, give us a call 0207 862 There's that number again. I'll speak to you in just a moment. So the former Brexit Party leader took aim at the upper chamber and its hundreds of unelected peers in the I'm a Celebrity camp, calling it a throwback to a more pompous time. Take a look. I, I, I went to the House of Lords about two months ago. A guy that I served with in the late 90s and early noughties in Brussels invited me to lunch. I said, what's it like here? He said, it's the best retirement home in the country. <laughs> he said, I get a taxi in every morning. He said, I do a little bit of paperwork sign in for the money, go to lunch in the subsidised dining room. They go into the House of Lords at 2.30 for the opening of debates or whatever it is, and then home. That's the day gone. That's it, done. And it's been stuffed full of people who've given parties money. Mm. It's pretty corrupt stuff, really. Wow, that's so interesting. But for those that are in there, it's a fantastic life. Oh, so do you agree with Farage that the House of Lords is no longer fit for purpose? Or do you think it should be axed? Emily, you've got a bit of skin in the game. Your brother-in-law is none other than Lord Cameron of Chipping Norton. How do you feel about it? Uh, Father, I just thought we'd bring up Farage. Is there a sort of whiff of bitterness there? Has he been offered a, well, he, a, no, nobody, a place in, in the he, House of Lords? He did want one. and so He, he, want he was one, calling for UK he, peers at one time, but he didn't he get doesn't any. doesn't like it. No. But he doesn't like the House of Lords now, mm. because he, but he did <laughs> want one. I mean, I do think that's worth bringing yeah. up. Um, I think the House of Lords has still got a long way to be reformed. I actually think as a second chamber checking on legislation, it is a, um, it's one of the oldest bits of our democracy. I think it does incredible things um, in many, many ways. Is your brother-in-law there? And I would say that... My, it's pantomime early this year. Yep. My, there we are. My, my Fancy dress. <laughs> I reckon will be a huge asset to the House of Lords. He's, he's a former prime minister. He's hugely knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. He understands how legislation works. He'll be able to bring, I think he'll work very hard at the job when he's finished with this job as Foreign Secretary. I think where it does need reforming, however, is I still think hereditary peers um, should be phased out faster. Mm -hmm. I think we saw, I think Prime Ministers are given way too much leeway uh, to put people into the House of Lords. Um, I think some of us are still fairly confused at a 30-year-old woman getting in. Um, I think... That this was Charlotte Owen. You should be, yes, and, and no, no, nothing to her, by the way, personally. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why she should have turned that down. So I think it's unfair that she has got the heat. But why isn't there, because, you know, it's about process. There should be a much, so even if the Prime Minister says, puts forward 20 people, they should still go through an interview process to make sure they are going to enter the House of Lords and... Be good at their job. Be good at looking at legislation. Bring something to the table where instead it just seems like, oh, you know, you, you, it, it just, well, some of the, it just seems to be incredibly arbitrary how you get in there. Kevin, I'm going to come to you in just a moment, but you mentioned hereditary peers, Emily. So uh, Jeremy spoke to Lord James Bethel uh, on his show a little earlier, and here's what he had to say, and he is a hereditary peer, about the House of Lords. There are 74 second chambers around the world. They're all a little bit weird, a little bit funny, but the House of Lords is probably the best because the amount of scrutiny that it puts on legislation is immense. There are very, very wise people who work extremely hard to polish up our laws. They come quite raw from the House of Commons. MPs don't really have the time or the expertise to go through it in fine detail. And that, that um, combing that the Lords does is uh, adds so much value to the country. But I'm the, a big defender. Um, well, that is the defence for the House of Lords. And uh, Emily mentioned it earlier. You know, there are people in the House of Lords that work very, very hard. Um, and it's a good check and balance, really, on what the government's trying to do. Oh, look, some of them work uh, very hard. I accept that. Some of them uh, are OK people. Uh, you know, I'll put Lord Dodgy Div, Emily's uh, brother-in-law, <laughs> to one side. And, you know, James Bethel is... Uh, he might be a Herrera, he might be a Toff, might be part of the establishment, but he's not a bad bloke. But it's a medieval monstrosity that it's somehow survived because we should elect the people who make the laws that we have to live by rather than allowing somebody because they were born into a certain family be there or others who are cronies of prime ministers and party leaders. Now, the guy that Ni Nigel Farage's mate will pay for his own taxi but you can get £342 tax-free a day just for turning up. Now, mm -hmm. I, 
I think no, that's you're wrong. Turning up. You've, you've, you've got to be there for an hour. No, you've, you've, you've got, got to sit. Be, you've have got, some no, lunch you have to like, sit. You can't just you, go in for lunch. You do you, have to take part. It's you, 148 yeah. if you just turn you, up. You go to the library, you flick through a document. No, no, no. You, you, have look, to, you have to you turn up to a, to, a, to a sitting in the yeah. Hold on, Emily. 148 just uh, for turning up is still quite a lot. No, I'm not arguing it. I have said the House of Lords needs to be reformed. I don't think, and I wonder if there should also be a retirement age put in so you don't get sit there till you're 98. I'm not someone, by the way, who's ages. And I know a lot of people who are over 70 who are, A, got time to do this. B, have lived incredibly... Um, We're going to elect them. Incredibly sort of... So we'll elect them. I elect them. them. But the, the hereditary yeah. thing, because you've noticed that Bethel was not was arguing for the House of Lords. He was not arguing for hereditary. I do think it's quite a hard thing to stomach in this day and age that you get to go into the House of Lords simply because your father was which, there. Okay, so I don't see down? how which that the, is still country, sustainable. Which other country has this system? And which country, which democracy in the world would decide to have a chumocracy if it didn't have one already? If the House of Lords didn't exist, I we wouldn't create it like this. We just wouldn't do it. Yes, but that's what I said. I agree with you in that it does need reforming. I just Where we disagree is I don't think the whole thing should be got rid of. I think it does work incredibly well to put checks and if balances need, on legislation. But it shouldn't be cronies. It has. And it shouldn't be hereditary. Hereditary. Like, should it be, as Kevin be suggested, elected? Oh, God, no. No. Why, why are you frightened of democracy? I'm not frightened of it being elected. I just think the huge... I mean, lay out to me how that would that would work, I guess. Well, and I'm open to elections. an argument. Ar ar around, around then that's just more elections, Look, more campaigning, more money the spent. The House of Lords has 800 members at the moment. There's only the Chinese Communist Presidium, or whatever they call it, has more members around no, the I world. Right? Every, everybody everybody else around the world, much bigger countries, get, get a... Yeah, get along nicely with smaller parliament. Mm. You would elect it, you can do it directly on a different electoral system. When we go to the polls, you can have two votes, you can vote for an MP, you can vote for a senator, we'll call them for the sake of argument. You can have a slightly different system, you can use PR, you could do it regionally. But hold on, why on earth then would we have, why would we vote for our House of Commons and then do a separate vote for the House Be of Commons? Because I get right, because it's normally... Because shouldn't then the House right? of Commons do a good enough yeah. job? Mo it should. But if it doesn't, you have a fail-safe. But you've elected it, and it's much smaller. Now, most of the amendments to laws, the changes that are proposed in the House of Lords, are proposed by the government itself because it's drafted legislation so badly in such a slipshod way oh, oh, that it needs, it needs changing. Now, you could say... If the government just got it right, you wouldn't need a second chamber. I'm, I'm prepared to buy that. Mm. If, if people want to argue that, you don't need a second one. I'll, I'll go along with it. What we don't need is something that is who you know, who your mates are. Or who you worked with. Uh, Peter from Leicestershire, what's your thoughts on this? Do we need to axe the House of Lords? It seems quite drastic. No, uh, for, for me, it's an essential part of democracy, not, not in its current standing. I'm sort of agreeing to some extent with both uh, Storm Huntley and the Daily Mirror, Mirror editor in that you could modify it. But remember when Boris Johnson wanted to parole Parliament? It's the House of Lords which stop it. They've done this times when there's been uh, what I would call foolish... Peter, Peter, uh, Peter, Peter didn't... Peter, uh, sorry, Peter, it didn't... Uh, the, the House of Lords didn't stop it. It, it. it went ahead, then later the Supreme Court ruled it was... Uh, it was wrong, it was unlawful. Well, OK, another checks and balances from the, the House of Lords then. But the, the, the House of Lords has stopped foolish legislation. I'm trying to think off the top of my head of it. I, it certainly uh, slowed down the Rwanda plan for, for one thing. Uh, there's plenty of bills that have passed. It, it, the, I suppose the criticism of the House of Lords is it can never really stop legislation. It just slows it Delayed, down and yeah. demands that changes are made. And that's maybe yeah. a criticism rather than a benefit for it. But why, why not have a House of Lords where you get, say, the, the scientific group uh, 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 suggest people for nominations to the House of Lords? Well, I that's... do agree it wants to change it. The Arts Council. Let's have some people who've no axe to grind but believe in, in art or believe in science or uh, it's a, it's environmental. Really... Th th this this surely is the way. We don't want politicians becoming too powerful. That's the way you get an end to democracy. It's actually a really populist, interesting populist, compromise uh, you come up there with, Peter. I'm going to put it to the panel. So I suppose uh, Peter is suggesting that each industry individually, whether you're in the arts or whether you're in the NHS or you know, you're in business, you vote independently for the individual you want to resent, or individuals that you want to represent you. I think that was my point that I was making. What you do is create another group of politicians. I think what there is 
something about the House of Lords. And I have said, agreeing with you, we really need to reform around cronies and, and, and hereditary peers. You get really, really sort of interesting, experienced people from different sectors of industry to go in. But if you make it a voting issue, we are just creating another wave of politicians who are going to be doing all the sort of political game playing that goes into that, being, being voted. If you, if you put, if, and look, I mean, look at our list here of the things they've done. They if, do do some incredible you, things in the no, House. There, there are some things. I remember they saved a lot of people's tax credits some time ago. I'm not mm, denying there's a mm. job of work occasionally to be done, but it comes out of the principle I believe it should be democratic and not foisted upon us. But if you pick an engineer or you know, Peter you know, thinks people from the arts world, mm -hmm. are they just going to vote on engineering issues they know about? Or are they also going to vote, you know, are the arts people going to vote on the engineering, the engineering on the arts? And, and why? Why do we just go for these professional groups? I think uh, taxi drivers, construction workers, nurses, teachers, well, we'd have people to working in, in call centres, they all have valid they, views they and, and experience. They do have a huge amount of committees. And on those committees, you're not, you're not paid any extra money to be on those committees. And those committees are... Um, they do pull in lots of um, um, opinion from the outside world. Um, those committees really look into every single bit of that legislation. Yeah. I do think and it can it can hold election. legislation. It doesn't move it. I think the other concern is, which we both just discussed before the show started, if it becomes elected, you could end up, which is what you have in America, where you've got one chamber that is like one party and you've got another mm. chamber which is another party and then this, your whole country grinds yeah, to a halt. This, this, was, this was more your concern than mine, all right, because you would, if you, if you elect different chambers and different views, then they will. They'll have to re reach a compromise. But there again, you have a UK government that yeah, says then, certain things. But you things. often don't You have a, a Scottish compromise. parliament, a that, Welsh parliament and an assembly happens, in Stormont can, when it sits. But they that, can take can, different views. But then it can frustrate the population because it can mean that the government can't do any work. It can't well, actually uh, move forward. But I just want it's, to get... It's not going to frustrate if we elect it. Peter, gonna... thank you for your call. Deborah from Blackpool, what's your views on axing the House of Lords? Yeah, I think definitely it should be axed. Uh, I think it all resorts back to colonialism. It's well out of date. I totally agree with Kevin um, and the lady. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Um, but I've had many names I today, including Storm Huntley. Emily, I can yes. only apologise for that. Emily, Emily. Yes. <laughs> Deborah, yeah. I suppose, we, I mean, we're, we're needing to wrap up very quickly, but I suppose the yeah. problem with that is it means the House of Commons have no checks and balances. Sorry. And are you... Uh, we're going to break soon, so you can answer that in a minute. That's uh, our but, peerage. <laughs> <laughs> but that means that there'll be no checks and balances of the House of Commons. Would you be fine with that, Deborah? Yeah, but I think they should be elected. If, okay. if you know, should shouldn't be unelected and uh, Tory donors and cronies. And can I Deborah, just make one point about colonialism? It's, been, it's dated since the eleventh the eleventh century, I believe, in democracy. So it's not. A yeah, colonial. and they're still there. You know, okay, peers, I think you know, we're, I think we're talking at cross purposes now. Thank you very much for your call, though. Thanks for all your calls and all your views on this. We're going to have to take a break. Um, and, uh, well, are we going to take more calls after the break? Should the House of Lords be axed? We're going to take more of them okay. then. And do you think the House of Lords should be axed? Yes, I do. Why? It's the best paid job I've ever heard of. Yeah, I mean, no you do have to do something. No, for the no national defense. insurance. OK, but, but, Diane, you do have to actually go in and do some work if you're going to get the 300. If you just want the 140-something, you could go in and just sign your name. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm quite sure my daughter-in-law is a nurse, works 12 and 13 hour shifts. Mm. She has pays tax and national insurance on every penny, and she even has to pay to park. OK, Dan, uh, you know, Diane, if you're going to compare it to that, it is very hard to make any kind of argument. But what would you suggest then that we use as a check and balance against the House of Commons? Well, surely there must be plenty men, women, who worked in industry or whatever mm. that would come in and do it for nothing. But how do you get... Oh, do it for retired. nothing is interesting. But how do you get them in there then? Well, I would, they would probably volunteer if they retired, they're bored. Okay, do you think that's that a good idea? Just taking anyone that's that fancies it. Well, I think Diane's on to something. You could ask people to nominate themselves, and you could draw names out of the hat, or you could just get the electoral register and pick them out the, okay, the hat like a lot. It'd be fairer. It'd be fairer than a load of chums it, being it be, chosen by people who are in power. It may be fairer, 
but there's a theory that anybody that wants that level of power shouldn't be given it. Yeah, well, so selecting yourself might be a bit of an issue. In one way, you could suggest that anyone who wants to stand for Parliament I shouldn't think, be elected an MP. I think that is probably but, where that but, first came from. But if you, if no, you, but if you come down... If you come down, processes to becoming an MP. If you, if you come down to we elect lawmakers, which I just think is a basic principle, we should elect those who make the laws that we, we have to obey. Uh, if you're not going to if you're not going to do that, you would not come up with a current system. You just would not. And and she's right. Diane's right. You don't pay tax on national insurance on mm. your three hundred and forty-two quid. You don't. And I can see why people will resent that. But it would be fairer by names out of a hat, a national lottery. It would be rather than whether you knew David Cameron, Rishi Sunak, Keir Starmer, because opposition parties get to nominate people. The SNP don't nominate people, by the way, um, but the Liberal Democrats do, and Nigel Farage would love it if they offered him a sniff of ermin. That's interesting. Do you think Nigel Farage would take it if he was offered uh, it? Oh, yeah. Look, he, cra he craves the establishment. He always likes to do... I'm the man of the people, I'm against them. Well, he had a Coots bank account. You can't get any more. <laughs> you can't get many more establishments than that. Very upset to go. <laughs> Diane, thank you for your call. Richard from North Yorkshire, mm -hmm. what's your views on this, on the House of Lords in general, I suppose? Well, I think it, it's, it, it's an essential of the body. But the point is, that must be made, the Lords do not make law. The only house that makes law in this country it's the Commons, okay, but they can and therefore they do the not law. need electing. They can change the law. They they can adjust. They can they can put adjustments in. They 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 they. It still then goes back to the House of Commons and is voted on by MPs. So no, in 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 legal terms, the MPs are the only ones that can pass legislation. No, no, no. It's not legislation, Richard, unless it's passed by the House of Commons, the House of Lords, and the monarch signs it, signs the bill into law. So the House of Lords does make legislation and a government has to be able to get bills through it. Well, it, it gets to amend legislation because the House of Lords are not allowed to introduce their own laws. Yeah, but, but, but no, but you can initiate legislation in the House of Lords. The government can do it too and if private individuals oh, can, but mo most legislation starts in the Commons. But it has to go through the Lords and... Sometimes you'll get Tory MPs will join with Labour, Lib Dems, Independents, they call them crossbenchers, and they will frustrate the government. But, but normally, normally the government gets its way. Richard, I think most people would say a check and balance on anything is probably a good idea. But the fact that they are not elected to be there, they are unelected, are you comfortable with that? Fine. How else would you get proper experts in there? Are, You've got people like Rick Feather from the unions. I mean, that's interesting. You think that they are experts on the House of Lords when people... Some people are just there by virtue of birth. Some people are there because they were people's stylists. Other people are there, well, we, we don't know, but they've got there very young. I, I mean, can we really say that all well, 780, however many of them there are, are all experts? I don't think there is. Isn't, that, isn't the politics part of the problem? But, but without, without the numbers, how do you have experts across a range of subjects? Mm. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm, like I'm with... I'm with, with Brian on this. I know it. I totally understand where Kevin is coming from, that you should have elected, but sometimes a slight quirk can actually work better because I think otherwise you get a second chamber which is filled with more politicians. And actually you do have an incredibly interesting mix of people in the House of Lords, uh, but I agree in many, and, and Kevin and I were just discussing off air, I think Labour will do some of these reforms. It's far too big. There's far too many people in there. I don't think the Prime Minister, like Boris Johnson, should be allowed to put 60 names forward. He wasn't actually allowed that many. It was brought down to 30. Mm. His trust was able to put for people forward. That's mm. ridiculous. And there should be reform. I don't think we can argue any more for hereditary peers. But I do think you do have in there some very interesting people. But then you people. get rid of Lord Bethel, who's an incredibly interesting person and very committed to it and, and it would appear to work very hard. Well, no, but I think he can... If you're there already, you can yeah, live out yeah. your you can live out your term. I just don't think there's some it, new... I don't think yeah. he should. If, if we're going to make an argument for hereditary Londoners, let's make an argument for hereditary bricklayers and hereditary nurses. Sometimes but, but Richard, that is how it happens. Richard, you, yeah, your, your experts are vastly outnumbered by former MPs and former ministers. It's, but aren't it's they experts in of... politics? <laughs> you probably need some experts. Yeah, but there. they're all probably right. They, they go. They, all of them. They go in with a party <laughs> badge, all right. And if, if they're going to go in, 
they're going to mean we should send them in. I just okay. come, I just come back. I don't know. I just think you're, you're going to you're going to get it filled with um, ex MPs. I, I well, it's full, it's full now of ex MPs. It's not it filled. Is. It's got lots of interesting Ryan people. Ryan from there. Newport, what's your thoughts? House of Lords, should it stay or should it go? It should go because uh, the government is just taking the government longer to try and pass things through there. The government have got like legal representatives and um, specialist advisors and things. So, and and these people are mainly rich and and they're not in touch with anything. They're like they don't know how I live day to day. They just, you know, they shouldn't be there. They isn't should be though, gone. Isn't it though, Brian? Probably a good idea that we slow down the process of legislation. I'm just putting it out there because oftentimes when we give things a little bit of time and a little bit of thought to become better. Yeah, but the, the government have got solicitors, barristers, advisors, all sorts of things. Then you've got the opposition just trying to slow things down by coming up with uh, whatever they possibly can, but they've got no real ideas themselves. OK, so you, and then you get, got rid of, to, get rid of the check and to. balance and let's just... Get laws passed, Brian. Thank can I, you can I make just one point? Everyone's talking about this might save money. All I can tell you that's going to happen, it, the, the legislation, look, one of the things they, 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 the, the Lords persuaded the government to make policy changes on was making non-fatal strangulation and threats to release intimate images an offence. Mm. That is like, as, as a woman, <laughs> it's like... You could quite easily do offensive. that in the House of Commons. You could, but I can what tell you what would happen. You're not going to save any money if this is a money thing. All they're going to do is hire right. more civil servants to make sure they are looking close enough at this legislation. Half the reason legislation is going through and being picked apart by the House of Lords, there simply isn't the manpower if you, in, in lots yeah. of departments to really look at this stuff. If you took the number, let's say... So from you're not going to save any money. I just want to make that point. Oh, OK, so if you took the number of peers down from 800 to 400, that's not going to save any money. No, I'm for cutting the numbers, yes, by the way. But, I'm just not for banning. will that save money? I don't know whether it will save money, a bit of money. Well, you'll save you'll save a lot of three hundred and forty-two pounds tax free a day. Yeah, I don't well. know how many actually claim it. I, I don't know the figures. On Angela that. from Lancashire, what's your view on the House of Lords? Well, um, I'm actually ashamed to say that three hundred and forty-two pound a week is probably more than what I earn a week. I and for them to get tax free and for me to work all week. And to earn lot that and get taxed on it, I think it's appalling. Oh, I mean, how do you count to that? Is is it fair to say that uh, being a check and balance on legislation that the House of Commons puts through is one of the most important jobs in the country? Is is that fair to say? No, it's not. No, no, I don't think that's fair at all. Okay, so do you, think, think people... do you think that we need a House of Lords? Even if let's say we reduced the fee, or we made it voluntary so that it, it, they didn't get any money for it. Do you think that we need a check and balance on the House of Commons, or would you quite hap, hap, be happy to let the House of Commons uh, create our legislation in-house? Yes. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think it comes down to what... Is it that, that they're, they're taxed, really? Angela? You think that, and I think that's a perfectly fair point to make, do you think those wages should be taxed? Because they are tax-free. You're, you're totally I, correct. No, I that. think they should be taxed on it. I don't, I, I don't think that the working class people should be taxed on... If, if, they, if they're going in every day and earning that money, I think they should be taxed on that mm. because people on minimum wage that are working all the hours they can work to make a end meet... Uh, Angela, I think that's, a, that's an incredibly valid point to make, I I, I, I agree. I, th I think they should be taxed um, in the House of Lords because some of them, as you say, might be um, very wealthy. And if everyone else is being taxed, why shouldn't you be taxed? I think on even going with to the, the House tax, of Lords, though, Angela would be quite shocked at, at the amount of money that they can earn. I know, uh, um, Angela. The reason they're not taxed is they have to pay for their taxis, train fares, and any accommodation out of that. That's uh, yeah, but I, 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 that. to to but I often it. pay to. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it is. I, I don't know what you do, Angela. What do you do? I'm working in a coffee shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure that Enough. isn't right next to your house, so you'll have to pay something in order no. to get there. Angela, thank you for your call. Thanks for all your calls on this. We are going to have to move on.